way far. so far. <laughs> Sorry. Got Cheers. It. It's another Friday Night Wine Talks. Here in London, England, um, I'm here with my friend Dominique Avoyer. You are one of my oldest friends at 62. No. <laughs> Lots of crap. Like aside from Joe, you are the longest. I think I met you guys both on the same day. Okay, the camera's far away, you gotta yell. <laughs> yep. We are here traveling. She came to Paris for the first time and now London. <laughs> The first topic, New York City. So we met in New York City. You are still living in New York City. Thank you. <laughs> you <laughs> like, why did I sound like an insult? <laughs> it's not an insult. You're still there. <laughs> no. You've been in, left. <laughs> you've been in New York for 10 years. All right. Why are you so loud for? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Wait. It's just funny because people dream of going to New York. <laughs> and once you live there, you're like, get me out of this city. Give me one thing you like about New York. <clears throat> no, there's a lot of things. There really are. There really are. I could just get up and be like, mm, I want a sandwich at 3 a.m. Can you just tell them the time that Dom used to live above a bodega? A bodega is like a deli in New York City. And if I would go in with you, Dom? They just... hated all my friends. But Damon, like, especially. <laughs> like, I go in, I get like a sandwich, a juice, some chips, like fruit, like something else, and they'll be like, a dollar fifty. Damon goes in and gets like some gum. Seven dollars. <laughs> Seven dollars. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, I'm like, but I know Dominique. <laughs> Dom was sitting here on the couch earlier and she was like, it's crazy. I don't miss New York. And I'm like, that's so true. Like even me being in like in love with Paris, when I'm out of it, I'm still like, I can find my happiness elsewhere. But you know, like the saying, like you shouldn't search happiness from an external place. Why do I have such like, <laughs> like, why don't my friends say this when I'm talking to them? I pull the camera and it's like, y'all have researched like it's philosophical true. quotes. It's true. Then like, you know, all these external things are great, but like, essentially like every bit of happiness needs to come from within and then like you can't escape your and problems what? wherever you go. Speaking of New York City, um, in terms of like, favorite topic. <laughs> we both bond over Azealia Banks, who is somebody who has dope music but like who is a little problematic? And I'm curious, cause I feel like you of all people would be the best person to respond to that. I'm still not even getting the damn question. So my question is, Jesus, sometimes I'm talking, I'm like, God damn it. Um, like, can you separate <laughs> the artist from the artistry? Go. It depends. Where it's like extreme, where you have incredible music, but you're racist, homophobic, transphobic. It's like, I want to support you, but do you, do you deserve my support? if you go against literally all of my values. But then again, with Azalea, I feel like it's a special case because I don't even think she believes the stuff that she says. Yeah. She could be like, but she just ruins it. Maybe she doesn't want to be. There's that whole thing about like sabot self-sabotaging. Like maybe you <laughs> secretly don't want to be that successful or I don't know. Maybe. Or you don't think you can do it when really you can. That could be it. I don't know. Maybe that could be her case. I also think like there probably were times where she probably should have had more success and instead of dealing with that, she like got bitter and then would like lash out and be like, that's why you're a creep. <laughs> and we're like, uh, no. I think most racism, homophobia, xenophobia isn't even like rooted in hate as much as it is like just ignorance. Like, dude, like you haven't thought hard enough about this like idea that you grew up with. Makes no sense. And then also it's like shame on you because you your best friend could have been somebody in that group that you hate and you don't know it. Yep, because I have family members that thought that way and then over time they're like, damn, like I did have a cousin that I loved and then I found out they were gay or whatever and then it's like, you love them less because of that? Because <laughs> if you do, that's weird. I remember I did a, a social experiment uh, when I met my ex. <clears throat> ding, 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 like the dinner goes off. <laughs> Drink every time he says that. <laughs> um, I want to do a social experiment where I was like, okay, I'm not going to tell really anybody that I'm seeing this guy for like a year. Also because I was like afraid. <laughs> it was like a social experiment too because I'm like, okay, if everyone still loves me for who I am while I'm dating this guy that nobody knows about, and then once I tell them I've been dating this guy for the past year, and then if all of a sudden they don't like me, then like, <laughs> That's just stupid because I haven't changed at all. Yep. 
Because that's like a good point to make. Like, do you realize how crazy that is? Yeah, I'm like, you know, I was, I've been dating him for the past year. Nothing changes now that, now that you know that I'm dating. It's like, well, yeah. I know how you're doing things in the bedroom and I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I just think this is so funny. Oh. Every time I'm around Dominique, I realize this one inside of me is like, gets stronger and stronger. <laughs> I'm like, you're like, I know what, what this it? Is about. <laughs> My unpopular opinion is that it really triggers me when I'm having a deep one on one with somebody or in a group of people. Maybe I'm visiting home for the first time in a year. Maybe I haven't seen a friend in so long. And we're having the deepest conversation, and then it gets interrupted by a little baby that walks by. And then everyone's like, oh my god, so cute! The dog! And I'm like, that's what we stopped for. I told you it was an unpopular opinion. Um, just correct me. Just correct me now. I mean, I understand, but I'm like, the conversation can continue after that. But it's such a fleet, it's almost like we are animals, because we're like, <gasps> it's like such a fleeting attention thing. Babies and dogs are cute. I agree. And they're distracting, because they're so cute. <laughs> it's not that I don't think dogs or babies are cute. I do, I think they're adorable. But I almost feel like everyone knows that. It's a reflex. We can't help it. And it, like after you said it, I was like, okay, fine, I won't get excited. But I'm just like, <laughs> like about to explode. I'm like, don't say anything about the baby. Don't say anything. Don't look at the baby. 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 <laughs> it's annoying. Like if you're in a deep conversation with your lover and he's like, oh, baby. <laughs> like why I'm you like, gotta say it with the French accent? Cause that's what you like. Don't I? <laughs> If they open that mailbox. Okay. Oh my god. I'm about to go grab it. <laughs> no, you are not holding a I damn knife. Not. I'm not going out without a fight. Do you have any unpopular opinions? I feel like we could talk about this. I've known you for 10 years. <laughs> I feel like my unpopular opinions are usually always about like music artists. Which I love. <laughs> oh, that's so true. Every everyone that's in the spotlight or limelight at the moment, Dom's always like, dang shit. No. <laughs> you are. You are. Just think about all the people that either could be in that spot or like I think the way that they got to that spot wasn't deserved. Like throwing people under the bus. So basically Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> So who we got in 2019? Wait, when I'm around Dom though, I realize I have two sides. There are two sides to sensitivity. It's touchy feeliness that I realize I'm not a touchy person. I like, I am when I'm in love, but with my friends, I'm not like a, come here. Oh, oh yeah, right. <laughs> I'm like, finally. <laughs> finally, David's touch. This is all I wanted. Cause you with your friends, you're, are you touchy feely? In New York? I guess, yeah, me and Alani are like, no! I don't know why I'm triggered so much by that. Do you want to talk about it? <laughs> See, and then the other side is that I'm down to talk about things like that. I always say Dom's like my therapist because while you are a quieter person, True. especially in groups. Oh yeah, I don't, I'm mute. <laughs> you're like, I don't, I don't I'm do. I'm like, so where are you from, Brooklyn? <laughs> what part? Best side. How long have you been there? No, oh, 10 years. <laughs> like doesn't doesn't follow up. I don't need to know about you. You need to know nothing else about me. <laughs> I can't project already, and if I have to try even harder to project, I'm just not gonna talk. Half the time I talk to her, I don't even know if she's responding. <laughs> Speaking of being someone who's more quiet, this isn't. A, that's not a negative thing. I feel attacked. <laughs> this is not a negative adjective. It's People not. always take the word like introvert and somehow. I used to feel that way. I, like I'm joking, but before, like oh my god, I thought it was like the worst thing in the world to be an introvert. Like I thought it was something wrong with not wanting to be in groups. So I would force myself to be in groups and then just be having like, a panic it. attack. Like <laughs> and then I was like, you don't have to be in a group. As an introvert, the friendships that I have have been from controlled environments. I'm in a workplace. I'm going to a place where I'm going to see the same people. Constantly. College. We met through college. How did you meet David and Nolani? Those are her two other Control close environment. friends. Control environment. Okay. I met David when I was at work. Well, that's I the answer David then. A job. Go join a, a class that you're interested in, and then you're in a cult and controlled environment, and you'll meet somebody. Yeah, you join a class. I thought we were so similar on this point. We'll walk around a city and like put a sad song on. It's not even a sad song. It's a song. Not even sad. It's a sad that like is poignant. A word that I. Like, actually learned the definition of this week. I was trying to walk around Paris with Dom and be like, oh, look at the beautiful buildings, but listen to this. 
I'm what like, are you doing? Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know if y'all watched that video when I was in Prague and I met the guy named Sam. He was also the guy that made me realize that being sad wasn't something that you needed to try to avoid because he would be like, sadness is one of the human emotions, just like happiness or anger. And why do we need to try to always avoid sadness when we should be almost happy that we can have human emotions? It's so interesting when you watch kids, they don't hold on to emotions, so why do we? If they're sad, they're sad for like five minutes and they're happy again. Like, we don't have to hold on to these things. We can feel them, we can honor it when we feel it, and then move on. All right, Dom, uh, we're getting to call me by your name. I don't know why you added that on the list of topics. <laughs> I was late on the bandwagon, like everyone was telling me to see it, and again, I'm like, I, I don't want it to be sad. And then I watched it. I'm not a crier, I probably cry like once a year. I was in the theater like, <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> I just said I wasn't a crier. <laughs> this movie does it. That movie, okay, so see, maybe, this girl has tears in her eyes. <laughs> I don't but this know. is why it's so beautiful, it's such a beautiful emotion. It's wine. <laughs> everything. It's the couch. It's really smushy. Can you just recite one scene for us? <laughs> <laughs> Which one? <laughs> <laughs> You're not sick of me yet? And he's like, I just wanted to be with you. And then he's all awkward and he's like, I I'm gonna, uh, I'll go. And then he's like, do you know how happy we are that we slept together? I'm like, damn, Oliver, just, yeah. tell, just tell all of Italy. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, shh, why are you so loud for? Hey, what did Elio do? He's like, no, I don't know. And then Army oh, Amber smiles that beautiful smile. Oh, God, he's so beautiful. And he's like, of course you don't know. And then they walk and they do the little close up on their hands when they like hold hands. I really talk about coming by your name. Do you see what happens? It's fine, I can just talk about it to myself. Dom asked me if I believe in heaven or hell. Why were we talking about that? I don't know, just keep in mind. <laughs> we're like <laughs> eating avocado toast. So do you believe in heaven or hell? <laughs> it's like, oh. Uh, I think that I said that I don't think there's a hell at all. I think that there's some place we go and then like maybe that's our actual life. Right, And yeah. that this is, what we're living now is not really anything. Or maybe it's like our I don't know, I feel like we go somewhere and that's like a whole nother life that we start. When you zoom out of planet Earth and see how small we all are. <coughs> how small we all are. How small we all are. Have you ever gotten so existential that it starts to scare you? Like, yep. you like zoom out of planet Earth, then you zoom out into our universe and see how many like Earths there are and realize like, and why are we on this Earth? And then like, is this even real? And then you start getting scared, like I'm starting to get scared right now thinking like, is this even real? And it's like, we believe what they tell us. They, there totally could be life on these other but planets like, and they're just telling us there isn't. Not even that, but how can this even be real? Yeah, maybe, maybe they're lying. I don't know, but it starts getting scary. Cause how do I know that this is real? And then why does this even matter? And it's like, how am I like moving and being a person? Like what, what? I read this really interesting quote article. <laughs> what if we're actually living our like second life right now? And when we have deja vu, it's because the deja vu was from our first life. Confession, I genuinely don't remember ever having deja vu. But everyone- That's like, not fun! Has. I know, and I'm Deja like, vu's fun. Is, that just, just, is this my first life? <laughs> so I'm like- I just remember growing up in Indiana, everyone was Christian. Like, everyone said they were Christian, even if you didn't go to church, like, you, you just believed in God. And if you didn't, if you, like, ever dared to say, like, eh, I'm kind of questioning, I don't- really know if there is a god or like anything like that. Everyone would be like, dang man, I thought I raised you better. I'd be like, have you ever questioned this? What'd you say? I'm a black girl. Dom has been going around Paris and London saying she's a black girl. How do you feel being a black girl in Europe? Because clearly everybody wants to know <laughs> on my Instagram. Um Paris and London don't feel any different and I also don't feel like it's on either end of the spectrum of being like overly celebrated where they're overcompensating or like why is this black girl here like I don't feel that at all I didn't feel it in Copenhagen <laughs> felt it a little bit in Spain even looking at the advertisement that's what I was saying like the ads don't feel like okay we have a white girl here so we got to put a black girl here we'll put like an Asian girl back there Another question I got on my Instagram was uh, racial preference while dating. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with having a preference, but if you need to bash a whole other group of people mm. to back up the fact that you have a preference, mm. then that's where we have an issue. It's like, oh, I love, I love white men. 
But I, ew, I can't stand black men. Why did you have to add that? Why you? That was Why? not necessary. You didn't have to say that. You could have just said, I like white men. And a lot of it is societal conditioning. Like, have you ever seen those shirts people wear that say, like, you have been conditioned to believe that European European characteristics are the epitome of beauty? Which sucks, because we're still there. Like, I never had an issue being dark-skinned. Like, I never was like, oh, I want to be, like, light, light. Like, I never that never crossed my mind. Like, I remember a boy I liked in middle school. He was like, you're really cute, but, like, if you were, like, two shades lighter. Ew! And I was like... That's your what? The gay community, when you're on all the apps, it's a known thing that people are like, no femmes, no blacks, no Asians. It's basically like, I just want white people. Oh my god. It's a real thing. I did that not people know do. that. Oh yeah. Like, why are you limiting yourself? Maybe your husband is all those things. Every time I go back home to Indiana, I just feel so different from the people there. Every time I'm back, they'll be like, oh my god, damn it, I heard your gold chain got stolen. Was it black? And I was like, no. Like, and stop doing that because you're perpetuating your own stereotypes. Those are the same people who will be like, I'm not racist. And then they'll say something like that, which is like, I think you're kind, kind of are. The crazy thing is I have people in my family that talk like that. And we're black. <laughs> Gosh. Like, and I'm like, why do we hate ourselves so much? <laughs> but it's so frustrating. Ugh. I could people point the finger. Yeah, because it points something out about yourself. Yep. It's like you're like, Gender equality or toxic masculinity. Yeah. You know, Timothy. <laughs> Timothy Chalamet, if you don't know him, he's been making great points about toxic masculinity in his most recent interviews and his promotion for Little Women. Go see it, it's still in theaters. <laughs> um, great film. And I, can, I agree with everything he said. <laughs> doesn't like, say what he said. <laughs> but it's how you men are conditioned. It's like men don't cry. Like, even as a little baby, you're like, you're crying like a girl. Like men aren't encouraged from a young age to just feel what they're feeling. When I went home to Indiana just recently, my nieces, I could see it because we went into an American girl doll store and I was their uncle and I was with my mom and it was a whole trip. We were gonna go there and get them dolls and they thought it was so funny. And I like, of course it's cute and funny, but like it also like, there's a, why is it funny? Why is this so funny? <laughs> they thought it was so funny that I was going with them to the American Girl doll store. They're like, this is a girl store! And then I remember they were like, do you have any girlfriends? And I said like, no, I don't like girlfriends. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then they didn't know how to process the information. Like, he doesn't like girl friends. <laughs> 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 it's like all these math equations. Carry the one, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching this video. Please leave your comments below uh, on everything we covered. We talked about being an introvert, being uh, vulnerable, being uh, liking sadness, or maybe not liking sadness, maybe not liking kids or dogs. Um, we talked about race. We talked about... <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bizu. Bye. How do you feel with the bizu when you're up? You're like, you're not a fan? Touch my face. <laughs> I didn't ask. I'm trying to embrace you. And they don't like that. They think that's more sexual. All like, right. Blah, blah. <laughs> so gross. You're like, it is. <laughs> Bye. No. no. Watch clips from Call Me By Your Name. Not the whole, not the whole film. Just. Which scene? I don't know. I love it so much. <laughs> Why? <laughs> we. This is gonna be like a three-hour episode. Good luck, Ed. Thank you, going. Ready? <laughs> I'll edit this to make it look good because you know sometimes like I'll be talking I'm like following like, like yeah <laughs> I'm just human don't judge me don't judge me I just every time I look up she's like and I'm like square <laughs> up what what <laughs> I wanted you to- I'm like, you wanna like go, <laughs> let's go, like I'm- What? Me in the club last night when that Raphael came up and you're like, Oh, time to get water! And I was like, oh, look at that, I'm thirsty. <laughs> <laughs>